All right, y'all. Art of Fruita 2023. This is the first annual show. It's amazing to see art come across the entire Grand Valley. We have major shows in Palisade, in Grand Junction, and in Fruita. The origination of the Art on the Corner program across the entire nation can be credited to Grand Junction, Colorado. That's a fact that few people know. It's one of the things that our community should be most proud of. And now we can celebrate that art is across the valley. We can see public art everywhere we go. You can go to Palisade, you can go to Fruita. I'm so excited to see what happens. Come join me. Joining us this evening. Try to beat the weather. <laughs> so I will be brief. Um, welcome to the inaugural part of Fruita. Uh, sculpture program, rotating sculpture program. Um, we have three artists this evening that we will be celebrating. Uh, Gary Hoschel, Trevor Hall, and Pavia Justinian. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we will be taking a little walk about here shortly. Uh, but I would like to thank, quickly, thank um, the Fruit and Rotary for their ongoing support of this project uh, this year and onward. Fantastic. Um, FCI constructors were volunteered their time for installation. Uh, could not be happier. <laughs> they did a wonderful job and they were quick. Um, City of Fruta, uh, particularly Mark Mancuso and Sierra De Pinto, who really let me drive them crazy in the last little while. So thank you uh, for that. Um, Farm for hosting us this evening. Farm Fruta, uh, fabulous facility. We're so happy they're here. Um, and of course, the Fruit of Arts and Culture Board, who all stepped up to help with fundraising, uh, to round out the funds we needed to do this project uh, through the Coco Vino fundraiser. So mark your calendars for March, we'll be doing it again. And uh, that's how we fund this project, is involving our community, our art-loving community, uh, with the Coco Vino fundraiser. So please, March 9th, 13th, somewhere. First first week of March, let's put it that way for now. And uh, follow our Facebook and Instagram pages for more details as it gets a little closer. So, yeah? Uh, everybody's had their snacks and drinks and all. We're good. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. warnings about this is the last stop you're going to have for gas and so forth and then we're driving and we see these other government official signs yellow triangles that are going look out for tortoises slow down for tortoises be careful and so we're looking and we have no idea what the tortoise is it's two inches it's at two feet we're slowing down we pull over we go to the desert we don't see any tortoises but what the heck? So then we looked it up and we found out that pennies of the world, they'll, they'll lay 50 eggs, 100 eggs, but only one out of 50 lives. And so that's what penny is, just coming out of that egg and reaching up for hope like, here I come. Wonderful. Yeah. So I hope you love her for a year. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> and Gary, she is bronze and marble, correct? Is that correct? Good guess. <laughs> Penny is bronze, and then this is actually uh, cement, 
that I added Ooh. colors and stirred it up and then added the red aggregate what I wanted. And then we, I abused the potter's wheel. And so we have 300 oh pounds gosh. of cement the potter's wheel and I turn it and he grind it down. <laughs> so, yeah. Nice. And then this is local sandstone. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Very cool. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Our next artist is Trevor Hall, and uh, this is Backwood Blues. Well, I've had my style described as organic industrial, and I think that kind of fits. Uh, I'm, I'm run with it because I just like the idea of using these hard, heavy materials, steel, and turning it into something that looks natural. And the inspiration came from, my, I play guitar myself, and just thinking about if you had just left a guitar laying out in the woods and a tree grew up through it. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it is an oak. And is that like a favorite tree of yours or why oak? It's something that uh it's something that had a, a leaf shape that I liked. <laughs> and just just thinking about just a scrub oak and how hardy and sturdy they are just kind of fit with what I kinda of had in mind. And did you say what it's made out of? It, it's all steel. Yeah. Just, just scrap metal, basically. Scrap metal? Great yeah. job. That's kind of cool that you're trying to get the water to turn into some scrap. It works, you know? <laughs> <laughs>
so the process that I did with this, I started with a pretty thick post um, in the middle, like a pipe, and I filled that with concrete to try to keep as much of the weight as I could centrally located. <laughs> so I kind of had to choose my materials carefully. Um, a lot of the heavier materials, like the chrome bumpers here uh, in the abdomen, you know, those are all very close to the, the base. And so, you know, we're keeping most of that center of gravity in the center. <laughs> and then on the back, um, the hind legs, I chose like the thinnest material that I could find for that, trying to keep it really lightweight. And then I also did a lot of hopping back and forth between working on the back and the front, just so that the weight would stay balanced as I built it. But even with all that, uh, it, it eventually reached a point where it was like wanting to tip over a little bit. <laughs> so what I did was I actually got a bunch of empty cans and I filled them with concrete and I welded them inside right to the center post. <laughs> so a bit of a jerry rig solution. I, other artists will probably tell you too that a lot of art, you know, relies on some jerry rig solutions. Uh, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. And, you know, obviously it is bolted to the ground right now, so it's not going anywhere. But even as a freestanding piece, it is very balanced. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, so that was just an additional challenge, um, something to figure out as I went. And, uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the result. And um, if you look, too, there's a lot of, like, this corrugated steel in the body and in the legs. You'll see a lot of this material on people's roofs and fences around here. And I love sculpting with this material because it has its own curve to it. So you can, you know, bend and curve metal with heat or brute force, you know, depending on how thick the metal is. But uh, for me, at least, it can be difficult to get just right. So I prefer to, you know, start with something that already has a bit of a curve to it. You can cut it into all kinds of different shapes. You can get a little variation with the curvature too by like flattening one end and then pinching the other end a little bit extra. You know, there's just a lot of different stuff you can do with it. And it's really lightweight, which was good for this piece. So I used a lot of that. And then I also used these chrome bumpers. I picked up a whole bunch of these and fenders and stuff um, from a storage locker from a sculptor who was hanging up his spurs. And his loss was my game. <laughs> so I love working with the chrome bumpers. Um, I just love the way that like reflective chrome pops against like the rusty steel. And, you know, I mean, any kind of like steel that's not coated, you know, it will rust over time in the elements, but I'm not a very patient person. So I like to see how it's going to look right now. <laughs> so what I do is uh, when the when the weld is still hot, um, I take ferric nitrate mixed with water and I just brush it on while it's still hot. Um, and then as it evaporates, it creates that rust. And so it speed rusts it. And I really like doing that. So those are just a few of the techniques that I like to use that I've used in this piece and in my uh, rams and roundabout and stuff. I really enjoy sculpting local wildlife and doing these active poses and I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, I will have some sculptures going up at the Clifton Library uh, desert animal installation soon. Uh, there's some there already and there will be a couple more coming in. Um, and then there's also another piece that's going to be coming into the Redlands roundabout. Uh, we're going to install that in January. It's going to be a ram up on a rock ledge, so keep an eye that. Thank you all again for being here. I have a business card if you want some. Let me know if you have any questions.